Nicole from Sydney English Teacher and from The Successful English Learner by Sydney English Teacher and I wanted to welcome you on this beautiful Monday morning <laughs> to Nicole's Weekly Words. We have reached episode number 12. Can you believe it? <laughs> That's 12 weeks of vocabulary learning. So thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I do hope that you're enjoying Nicole's Weekly Words and that not only are you learning new vocabulary, but that you are using it or trying to use it throughout the week as well. <laughs> So this week I've chosen five great new words again following the weekly theme. We are now on to the letter D of the alphabet. <laughs> so the five words for this week all begin with the letter D. Um, yeah, I think that you'll enjoy these words, that you'll be able to hopefully use them. If you recognize them or you've heard them before, don't worry and don't um, stop learning. I want you to continue watching the lesson, the video anyway, and then to try and use the words yourself. Because, you know, there's a big difference between recognizing and knowing and actually using the word. So we're here to take that next step and to really encourage you, I suppose, to start using um, more advanced, more impressive vocabulary on a daily basis. So without um, anything else, um, I think we should start. Oh, but quickly, um, if you think that this video would help any of your family or friends, feel free to click on the share button down here and to share it with them because the more people I can help, the better. So um, yeah, share the love <laughs> with your family and friends so that they can improve their vocabulary as well. And don't forget, you don't need to take notes um, right now while you're watching. Instead, wait until the end of the live video, then go and visit my Facebook group, The Successful English Learner by Sydney English Teacher, where you'll be able to download a worksheet which has all of the vocabulary, all of the meanings and all of the example sentences that I share with you today. Um, you've even got room there to write your own notes and your own example sentences to practice. So sit back, relax, learn and enjoy with me here today and then come back later, download the worksheet and you can watch and learn again. <laughs> Okay, well, let's begin. The first word for this week, for week number 12, is debacle. Can you pronounce that? Debacle. Great. <laughs> Have you heard of the word debacle before? Well, the word debacle really represents something that is a complete failure. Okay, and it's especially a failure or something that's gone wrong or very wrong because of bad planning or because of bad organization, I suppose. So a debacle is really an event or maybe a situation. It could even be an attempt that is a complete failure, um, that is a complete disaster, <laughs> something that goes completely wrong. It's not what you expect it to be, I suppose. The results are not as um, positive <laughs> as you would want them to be. So debacle basically is complete failure. <laughs> Some examples to help you. You might say something like, the political debate ended up being a complete debacle with neither candidate impressing the audience. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> Another example, the company's inability to adjust the changing, let me say that again, my apologies. <laughs> the company's inability to adjust to the changing market can only be described as its greatest financial debacle. 
There you go. So two great sentences there. When you download the worksheet later, you can read them again and try and write your own sentences to practice. <laughs> Moving on to word number two for this week. And the word I've chosen is dexterity. Dexterity. Can you say it? Dexterity. Beautiful. <laughs> so look, there's really um, two things here with dexterity. The first meaning is when you're talking about your physical ability with your hands, okay, your skill with your hands, I suppose, your ability to do something really difficult with your hands. So your ability to perform a difficult action or a difficult task, I suppose, quite quickly and quite skillfully with your hands. So, you know, something that might be difficult for someone else to do. You can do really quickly and easily without really trying too hard. That's dexterity, but it has to be something that you do with your hands. So it might be knitting or sewing or, you know, anything like that, drawing. Dexterity there means your ability, your skill to use your hands in order to complete a task really quickly and easily that other people might find quite difficult. <laughs> so basically you can use your hands well, you can use them with skill in order to um, do this task. You know, it could be even catching a ball, you know, not everybody can do that, or holding a pen or a pencil, lots of things there where you need dexterity. <laughs> the second idea there for dexterity is not about physical ability of using the hands, but it's about the mental ability, you know, the ability to think quickly, the ability to use your brain, I suppose, the ability to be really skilled and smart in the brain, you know, being able to think quickly and come up with solutions. Um, yeah, really the ability to have the answer and be quite smart without too much of an effort. So dexterity could be that physical skill with the hands or that mental skill with the brain. <laughs> I'll give you some examples. So you could say, he had such impressive dexterity when playing the guitar, he's truly a talented musician. Wow, that's true. That needs real dexterity there. Not everybody can play the guitar and strum those strings and actually bring out a beautiful piece of music. <laughs> um, another example might be, um, she has the verbal dexterity of someone twice her age. Wow. So there we're talking really that mental ability, that intelligence, I suppose. Another example, you need perfect manual dexterity to be a dentist. It's certainly not a job for everyone. Yeah, that's so true, you know, you can't make a mistake there. Um, first of all, you probably need mental dexterity as well. You need to be quite smart about what you do and think on the spot, but you need to be able to manually be very good with the hands, you know, and um, not make a mistake um, so that someone loses a tooth. <laughs> so there you go. There is the word dexterity. The third word that I've chosen this week for Nicole's Weekly Words, which also starts with the letter D, is divulge. Divulge. Can you say that? Perfect. So if you divulge something, it really means that you make something secret known to others. You know, you might have important information or a secret or a plan or maybe some financial figures or even 
I don't know, the name of someone, you know, anything that's private or confidential information. If you tell someone this information, if you share this secret with them, then you divulge. That's the verb there to express giving that secret or confidential information away. For example, the policeman emphasized that at this stage of the investigation, they are unable to divulge any details. Good example. Or another one, the company will not divulge its profits for 2020, but it's clear that despite COVID restrictions, despite COVID restrictions, they did really well. So there you go, divulge, a great word to learn. <laughs> Quite advanced, isn't it? <laughs> Number four, the next word I've chosen is dormant. Dormant. And look, dormant really means that something is not active or something is not growing or developing. But it has the ability to be active or to grow at a later point in time. So at the moment, it's not doing anything, you know, it's not moving, it's not growing, it's not developing, it's just stationary, I suppose. <laughs> However, in the future, it has the possibility or the ability to change to grow, to move, to develop. That is dormant. If it's now, no movement, no change, but later, there is that possibility. So we use this really when we're talking about nature. You know, a volcano can be dormant for many, many, many years, and then suddenly things change and there is activity, there is movement, the volcano starts to wake up, I suppose you could say. We also use this in health, um, you know, when we're talking about cancer, you know, cancer could lie dormant in your body for many years and then suddenly it wakes up. So that's another area, the health area, where you would use this word. Um, we often use um, the expression to lie dormant or to remain dormant or to even sit dormant. So it's really when it's asleep, it's inactive, and then it has that ability to wake up later at a later point in time. An example. This volcano has been dormant for hundreds of years, but it has just started to show signs of activity again. <gasps> Help! <laughs> or the dormant investigation about a potential case of fraud has been reopened. There you go. Another one. The virus has unfortunately remained dormant and undetected for many years. So there you go. Um, number five, are you ready for our last word for this week? It is daunting. Again, daunting. Well done. If something is daunting, okay, it makes you feel a little bit frightened, a little bit scared, a little bit worried, I suppose, about your ability to achieve something or to do something, you know. So if something is daunting, it can be a little bit intimidating, I suppose. You're a little bit overwhelmed by it and afraid of it. Um, and you're worried, I suppose, about your performance, about the fact that you won't be able to do it well or to complete it or to achieve it. That's what we call daunting. So it's a little bit, oh, help! <laughs> That's really that feeling behind um, daunting. So we might say something like, um, few things are more daunting than having to speak in front of a large group of people. That's actually true. <laughs> 
Um, or we could say something like, the idea of having to present um, my proposal in front of the board of directors is so daunting that I can't even sleep at night. <laughs> there you go. So look, there are your five words for this week. We've got debacle, dexterity, divulge, dormant and daunting. What I'd like you to do is to practice them as much as possible. You know, go back, watch this video again, take notes, download the, the worksheet to help you and really make an effort to use all of these words or at least one of these words every day this week. Um, and by the end of the week, you'll know them so well that they will come naturally when you're in that situation of using that word. Um, so yeah, there are our words for week 12, for episode 12. I hope you really, really enjoyed learning them with me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for learning. And I look forward to coming back again next week with episode 13. I can't believe it. <laughs> and to teaching you um, five more words to add to your growing repertoire of advanced impressive English vocabulary. <laughs> Have a great week everyone and if you have any questions please ask down here in the comments section. I'm always here to help. <laughs> Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.